In summer 2006, I joined my sister, Bhakti Sukhini, on a pilgrimage to India. Tarapit is where I discovered my Ishta Devi. Tarapit is a Devi Mandir dedicated to the mother of all Tantrikas, Ma Tara. I wanted to go there because it's one of the most important Shakta and Tantric sites in India. It is a place of celebration where worship of a living goddess continues in an unbroken tradition. Tarapit is situated in the Rampurhat district in the village of Birhum or Tarapur as it is often called. We took a four-hour train ride from Kolkata to the Rampurhat train station. It took us another 40 minutes on an auto rickshaw to reach Tarapur. Several modern and exotic looking hotels and vintage pilgrim accommodations lying on the outskirts of the village gave me a sense of relaxation as they silently greeted us. I was soon to discover, though, the truth of the saying, all that glitters is in gold. And for the first time in my Western life, I learned how it feels to sleep in a bug-infested bed or to eat masala finger chips three times a day because everything else either looked like crap, tasted like crap, or threatened to make me crap for the rest of my stay in India. But it wasn't the promise of luxurious resorts or the fresh air of Bengali pastoralism that lured me into Tarapur in the first place. One reason Tarapit is such a special pilgrimage site is its reverence as a Shakti Pita. According to the famous story of Sati Devi's self-sacrifice, the dismembered parts of her body fell all around India, forming the sacred geometry of 51 Shakti Pitas. Tarapit Mandir stands where Sati's third eye touched the ground. It is also regarded as a Siddhi Pita due to the many famous sages who here have experienced oneness with Ma Tara. Once upon a time, there was a sage named Vashishta who traveled from India to Tibet in search of his Ishta Devi, Tara. It was with the Buddhist Tantrikas of Tibet that Vashishta learned the left hand secrets of Tantric worship. After thousands of years of tapas, he was divinely hinted of a site on the bank of Dwarka River in Bengal. There, the sage was told, stands a shivalinga on one shore, and on the opposite shore of the river there is a pond, and by this pond is the right place to worship Ma. Vashishta not only found the sacred spot, he was also the first to achieve enlightenment there, witnessing Taramata in all her fierce glory. Since then, many have come to worship in Tarapit, some well-known gurus to realize Taramata here include Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, Nigamananda Saraswati, Ma Anandamoy and her husband and disciple Bolanath Chakravarti Baba. And of course, Ma's most intoxicated and beloved son and my personal favorite saint, Shri Shri Bamakhepa Baba, whose tomb in the Tarapit cremation grounds serves as a prominent pilgrimage spot. The structural history of the Mandir stretches back more than 2,500 years to when Joy Dutta built the first temple in Ma's honor after she resurrected his son in the healing waters of her pond. Nevertheless, the first temple was ruined in floods and around 800 AC, Somgosh rebuilt the temple he relocated it to its current site, farther from the shores of Dwarka. More innovation followed in the early 18th century under Raja Ram Jivan. And in 1823, after five years of work, it was completed by Jagannath Roy as the Mandir we see today. The heart of the temple is Tara's sanctum, 
which holds her murti. It is surrounded by a veranda and platform to accommodate visitors witnessing ritual from the outside. On the temple grounds, there is also a Shiva Linga shrine, other sacred spots, several courtyards, and a few stalls with puja merchandise. The temple offers powerful daily artis and darshans. I almost fainted during one. Tarapith also holds festivals, high holidays, rites of passage, and volleys performed regularly. Pinaki Baba is the main Purohit at Tarapith, and he is the most intense Shakta I've ever met. In the temple, Maya is worshipped and manifested both as Ugra Tara and as a loving mother whom devotees endearingly call Ma. One depiction of Ugra Tara comes from the myth of Sati, where she assumes the form of the Dasha Mahavidyas, of whom Kali is the first and Tara is the second. The Mahavidyas convince Shiva to let Sati crush the extravagant sacrifice hosted by her father. In the heart of the temple stands the Murti of Ugra Tara. Most often she wears a silver moon complexion, a lolling bloody tongue, matted dark hair and a crown of stars, endless malas of fresh hibiscus blossoms and a necklace of skulls. She is also Shmashana Tara, who is worshipped with liquor, bhang and blood. But the heart of Matara is sweet and merciful, open to all of her children. Under her ugra facade and garments is hidden a stone image depicting Tara suckling the infant Shiva. This sacred stone materialized where Rashishta and so many others had visions of Ma. It is a manifestation of yet another famous legend. In the ancient days of the Mahabharata, the eternally rivaling Devas and Asuras had united, churning the ocean of milk to produce Amrita, the nectar of immortality. Their efforts released a deadly poison into the universe. Preventing devastation, Lord Shiva swallowed the poison. It made his throat blue and tormented him with excruciating pain. Coming to Nilakantha's rescue, Taramata transformed Shiva into an infant and suckled him at her breast, relieving his pain. This is Matara's compassionate side, and it is worshipped at 4.30 each morning when Tarapit opens its doors for the first puja and arti of the day. This puja is the sweetest and most devotional encounter of Ma I've experienced in my spiritual practice so far. During the ritual, Ma's stone murti is baited and transformed into her Ugra self. Tara is also offered Bog Prasad, which is later distributed to an anxious river of beggars and mendicants spilling beyond the temple and into the market. For some, it is the only meal they will eat that day. The activity at the market starts as early as the temple. Curving to one side of the mandir, the market is a long row of tiny stalls selling tarma murtis, fresh flower malas, and related religious paraphernalia. Some vendors trade in food and beverages, while others earn their none from selling devotional music and videos, of which Tara is the obvious star. As busy as the market and as holy as the temple is the nearby Mahashmashan. Out of respect and according to custom, we removed our shoes upon entering its sacred grounds. Only saints and little children are buried in the Shmashan, and their graves are frequented alongside living Babas who receive visitors in their small huts. Bhakti Sukini and I were surprised to discover some Babas know English as they readily socialized with us over hand-rolled banana leaf cigarettes and some live music played by a blind Shakta minstrel sitting nearby. Our morning visit included honoring saints meditating while sitting on a pile of steaming human ashes. Drinking chai was the oldest Baba in Tarapit and stocking up on a supply of incense and candles. But under the cover of darkness, the Shmashan changes dramatically. In the dead of night, Shmashanatara haunts the cremation grounds. 
Night time is when many sadakas perform their rituals. It is the right time for some of the more esoteric or freakier tantric practices like Shava Sadhana. When I recall the sensation of cold mud sliding on my bare feet, walking through the deep darkness of the Shmashan for the first time, chills and butterflies take over my heart and I feel a deep desire to return to my mother. Indeed, with its busy pulse of thousands of pilgrims each year, Tarpi's beating heart never stops humming Matara's sweet song. In the past few years, Sharani has been leading pilgrimages to Tarapit on a regular basis. By Tara's grace, our connection to our mother and dedication to her work in the world has been deepening exponentially as our network of friends and support continues to grow. As for me, it is when I physically surrendered to Mas Hibiscus Fit and Tarapit that I truly understood that we are never alone. Jai Taramatta.